Hi, Ross Gilmore here from Multitracker. In the second part of the 20th century, axe manufacturing in the United States and around the world went into a significant decline, largely due to the popularization of the chainsaw. As a result, many axe manufacturers went out of business and many others that remained reduced the quality of their products in order to stay competitive in a changing market. During that same period of time, there were some minor changes to the design of axes themselves. Now, there has been a lot of conjecture about why those changes occurred. One theory is that it happened because of cost constraints and manufacturers simply forgetting some of the knowledge and experience from the past and simply looking to the bottom line. Another theory is that this is the result of research and development that resulted in those modifications. One specific change that gets a lot of debate is whether or not the change from convex cheeks on axis to flat cheeks was the result of those financial constraints. What I'm talking about here is not the convexity of the bit. Most axes even these days have convex bits. I'm speaking about the convexity of the cheek from heel to toe, meaning that in axes prior to the 1950s, almost uniformly across the board, we see that the cheeks are thicker in the middle than on either end. The theory goes that this will prevent sticking in the wood because it limits the amount of contact between the wood that you're chopping and the metal on the axe. If we look at modern axe designs, again, almost uniformly, there are some exceptions, we see flat cheeks. The cheeks are the same thickness in the center as they are on either end. Now there's a lot of speculation as to which design is better, why the change occurred. People are very opinionated on the issue. However, I haven't seen any data whatsoever. I haven't seen any type of comparison testing being done. So this is my goal today. I want to take a couple of swings with each axe and give you guys some data so you can make your own decisions. In order to make this test in any way meaningful, I had to eliminate, or at the very least try to eliminate, as many variables as possible. To that end, I searched for axes that were very similar to each other, with the exception for the convex cheeks. And here's what I found. To represent the earlier models, the prior to 1950s designs, I found a True Temper Kelly Works World's Finest. It has a head weight of 2.04 pounds. Now, originally this was part of my vintage axe collection, which I decided to sacrifice for this test. What I did is, I removed the original handle, uh, which came from the factory with the axe, and I hung it on a Council Tool Boys Axe handle. I sharpened the axe the same way I sharpen all of my axes. We're looking at roughly a 20 degree edge on the bit. For the modern axes, I have a council tool boys axe. Now this is these are axes currently being produced in the United States. The head weight of this axe is identical to the true temper. It's 2.04 pounds. And of course, the handle is the council tool boys axe handle. I have actually rehung this head to eliminate all possible variables and the axes are hung in the exact same way. It is sharpened to roughly a 20 degree angle on the bit. The only difference between the two axes is that on the council tool the cheeks are not convex. Other than that, the heads are both dating pattern, almost identical, hung on identical handles. Now the way I plan on testing this axis is taking a similar number of swings at a piece of wood with each axe. Now the significant thing here is going to be not the penetrating ability of the axe or how well it chops even, but whether or not it's sticking in the wood, because after all that's the theory behind the design. Now that's why I'm doing this on video instead of just showing you some pictures, so you can judge exactly how much each one of the axes is sticking. Another way to measure that is the time it takes to do us the same number of swings. Let's say we take 50 swings with each axe. If one takes twice as long, odds are that it's sticking a lot more in the wood. Now, all that being said, this is not a perfect test. There are a number of variables, the largest one, of course, being me. 
Um, I can make errors, I can get tired. I'll do the best I can to be objective and show you the results so you can make your own judgments. First we'll start with the true temper. I'm going to try to time it as best I can. Of course you can get the exact numbers from the video. Now let's try the same 50 swings with the council tool max. So here we have the results. This is approximately 50 swings with the council tool axe, and this is approximately 50 swings with the true temper. Say approximately because I went over each time. Uh, this one I think was about 56, this one was about 54 swings. I have cut it down to 50, so you can judge it for, in terms of timing from the video. To me, the two patterns look to be about the same. I can't tell any significant difference. The timing for the cuts for 50 swings is about a minute and 30 seconds. Actually, I believe it was a little bit shorter for the council tool, coming in about a minute 20. I was, however, noticeably more tired with the council tool axe, probably because I was powering to the cut more, and that's why I got the faster results with the expense of being more tired. Of course, you can judge the results for yourself from the video. That's exactly why I'm doing it in that format. Now, just to make sure that the last test wasn't a fluke, I'm going to repeat it on a different piece of wood. Now here is the true temper.
and here is the council tool wax. And here you can see the results again. This is 45 swings with the true temper and then 45 swings with the council tool axe. The cut marks look almost identical. I tried to give you a close up so you can get a better look. When looking, looking back at the video and doing the timing, it was about a minute and 20 seconds with each one of the axes to complete the 45 swings, which seems to go along with the minute and 30 seconds we got from the prior test. What conclusions can we draw from this test? Well, we took both axes and we took a roughly equal number of swings at two separate pieces of wood. Judging by the cut patterns, the two axes are very similar. In terms of penetration, I didn't see much of a difference, uh, plus or minus any errors that I have made in terms of accuracy and power application. In terms of sticking, which is the important part of this test, from a subjective standpoint, as the person swinging the axe, I didn't notice any difference. Each axe stuck at certain points and not others. I think the timing reflects that. In the first test, we had a minute and 30 seconds for about 50 swings with each axe. And on the second test, we had about a minute and 20 seconds for 45 swings with each axe. I think that reflects that the sticking is not happening a lot more with one as opposed to the other. The type of wood that I was uh, bucking here is most likely white oak, just judging by the trees in this area. I didn't see any other type, and that may play a role in this test. Now that doesn't mean that the theory behind what we're talking about is incorrect. It may very well be the case that an axe with convex cheeks sticks less, and we may be able to see significant results after a thousand swings, after ten thousand swings, but from a practical standpoint, it doesn't seem to be that significant of a difference. Here I was swinging at tree trunks that were between 8 and maybe 12, even 14 inches in diameter. If you're cutting wood smaller than that, practically the type of axe you get in terms of convexity of the cheeks may not play a big role for you. So that's just something to keep in mind. Look at the results for yourself and make your own decisions as to what is best for you.